everyone, it's Jessica Dibzinski, and today I have a very special project to share with you. I am joining in on a group of crafters who are scrap lifting Erin Jacobson from Crafty Concepts with Erin in order to celebrate her recent achievement of 20,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is incredible. I've decided to scrap lift this layout here. I absolutely love so many different things about it. Uh, but in that particular video, Erin talked about the triadic color theory, uh, and she showed how to use a triangle with a color wheel in order to select your complementary colors. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I don't have a color wheel, and I'm going to use my Love of Color Here book, and I'm turning to the charcoal color, and I see that three colors it suggests would be charcoal, lagoon, and lemonade. I think that's going to work out perfectly because my son's school picture here, he does have a little bit of yellow on his shirt. And so I have just gone digging through a whole bunch of my paper scraps and my stash to find little bits and pieces um, from all over the place from really old collections. I've been hoarding this particular piece of graph paper for a long time, and I think that this is the perfect occasion to finally cut into it. And like I said, I'm just using a whole bunch of old supplies as far as the papers go. Now I do wanna use my new Let's Party um, stamp set here because it's got some thin cuts that include numbers, and I wanna copy what Erin did. So I've gone ahead and punched out a bunch of numbers with those die cuts. And then I'm also gonna bring in a couple of my school themed stamp sets as well. So in Erin's layout, she had a piece of white daisy over here to the side that was about five inches long. And then she did include a zip strip. My piece of pattern paper in that lagoon color is actually not a zip strip, but I did cut it just a little bit bigger. Uh, so that way I could tuck it underneath the white cardstock, which is something that Erin often likes to do. I'm gonna bring in this piece of charcoal cardstock as well, and then I'm gonna layer up my photo on this piece of pattern paper that has that lemonade color. And then like I said, I think this is a good occasion to finally cut into this much loved and hoarded piece of paper from a really old mixing collection. Um, Lagoon is one of my favorite colors, and I am just such a sucker for anything that's like that gray style looking paper, ledger paper. I think it is so fun to create with. So um, big breath here for me and I'm going to go ahead and make that cut. I'm just kind of eyeballing about how big I want this piece to be. On the layout that I am scrap lifting, Erin did include a piece of lined paper over here to the side of her son's photo, um, and that was where she put the title and also I think a little bit of journaling. So I thought that those lines would work out so well for me to do the same thing. Now, if you have been around my channel for a while, you know that I have been on a mission to scrapbook my children's school pictures and also their sports team photos. Just, I wanna get them done while I can still remember what year everything took place in. So for this, my son's first grade school picture, I thought it would be perfect to use the School Friends Stamp and Thin Cut set. There are some really darling little animals on there with their backpacks and books. So I think I'm gonna stamp and cut those out later to use as embellishments. I also want to bring in these fun die cut numbers from the Let's Party scrapbooking stamp set and thin cut set. Um, and one of the things I loved about Erin's layout that I am scrap lifting is that she just had a bunch of cascading numbers over on that piece of white daisy. Now I want to edge distress my papers. So I did either ink or here I am grabbing my edge distressing tool and going around my piece of charcoal cardstock. And then once I've done that, I want to turn my attention to those numbers from that Let's Party scrapbooking stamp set. Now, in Erin's video, she did use a nail file to sand around the edges of all of her numbers before gluing them down. And my little sanding disc, I think, might be a little bit too big to try to get into some of those little uh, crevices, and I couldn't find a nail file. So I decided to stamp on my numbers instead. I'm not going to stamp on all of them. I did cut my numbers out in both sides of the Lagoon and Lemonade cardstock. 
The fun thing about Close to My Heart's cardstock is that it is two-tone. So one side is lighter and the other side is darker. That way I had a variety of shades of both colors there. And then on the lighter side of my Lagoon numbers, I just used that background stamp to add a little something extra. That way I feel like it has a little bit more variety as I am you know, putting them on that piece of white cardstock. I did save one number one that I can use as my title for uh, the first grade. And then I'm just going to start laying these out and twisting and turning them. You know, Erin in her video talked about making sure to spread around your colors so that you don't have too much of one thing that is close to each other. Uh, and since I have two shades of both colors, I'm just kind of making sure to mix them all around. Another thing that she pointed out if you are doing this layout is that you're going to have a lot of that white space actually hidden by the square that contains the photo. So there's no need to put any numbers behind that. So as I'm doing this, I periodically pick that up and kind of bring it back over just to make sure that, you know, I like what part is showing and, you know, move things as needed. Um, but this was really easy to recreate. And I think it's a lot of fun to have all of those numbers on there. It just feels really whimsical to me and so perfect for a school themed layout. So I'll get the last of my numbers up here and then I will use my tweezers and some liquid glue to glue all of those down and trim off any of the stuff that is hanging off the side of the paper. That way it looks more like pattern paper. Okay, I did save that one number one and I used all of my Lagoon colored number ones and I do want to stack this up a little bit because it is going to be part of my title. So I only had some yellow ones. I figured that's fine. I'll go ahead and glue those behind my Lagoon number one and if you know anybody is peeking from the side of this uh, page and kind of sees that little yellow poking out, I guess that will look kind of fun uh, since those are the, the two of the three colors that are on my page. All right, now down here in the bottom of that lined paper, Erin did use a couple of strips of washi tape. I don't have any washi tape that is gonna go along with this layout, so I did use that same background stamp and stamp a couple of circles down there. Um, after looking at it for a while, I decided that I really, I didn't like that. It was starting to get to be too much of the lagoon color and I wanted to bring in more of those blacks and charcoal grays. So I went digging back through the paper packs where I found these papers from and I pulled out uh, two zip strips and I'm just layering them up here. Um, and then I decide that I do like that better. So I'm gonna hide that stamping that I did and I'm gonna trim these down and um, ink them up, edge distress them and I'm gonna end up putting them right there. I've also gone ahead and prepared a whole bunch of other stamps and die cuts uh, for my school themed sets here. I've got those cute little animals with their books and backpacks. Um, I've also got that circle there from the Smarty Pants stamp set. And I'm just kind of playing around with where my embellishment clusters are going to go. You know, one of the things that I love about watching Erin create on YouTube is that she is such a good teacher. I have learned so much from watching her create. Uh, one of the things she always talks about is visual triangles and how to build clusters. And so I really credit her with helping me become a better scrapbooker. Now that empty space up at the top was bothering me and I wasn't sure what to do about it. And so I said, well, what would Erin do? And I knew exactly what Erin would do. She would cut some tags and she would stick them up there. And as soon as I did, I was like, yes, it works. That is exactly what that spot needed. Um, so thank you, Erin, for uh, that little bit of inspiration as well. I don't believe she had those on her original layout, but tags are definitely an Erin thing. Another thing that Erin often talks about is when you build your embellishment clusters to have something for your pieces to sit on. So that way they don't feel like they're kind of like floating around in empty space. So I'm going to steal that lemonade circle and I'm going to actually use it to layer up the notebook and the scissors and the paper airplane. Um, and I like the way that that looks sitting on that lemonade circle. I still had to figure something out with my title though because it's kind of bothering me. Um, and I'm also not sure yet about that elephant that I have up there by the tags. He takes me a little bit of time to figure out. Um, and then I decided that maybe I would move that little circle cluster over instead of having it on the far left side of those zip strips. Um, I kind of want to see how the one zip strip is longer than the other one. 
And then I noticed that it gave me that little L shape in there that I could kind of bring my first grade title down. Um, and it kind of nestled into that spot really nicely. Um, I, I was trying to make it work with the first grade up at the top of the lined paper and it just, it, it wasn't sitting well with me. Something about it wasn't right. And I liked kind of bringing that down and, and putting it into that corner. So before I glue any of that down, I am going to use my sanding disc to pull the color off of that yellow circle. And then I stamped a grade down and I got everything all glued. Okay, so I'm grabbing a black journal pen here and I'm putting a couple of doodle lines around my tag just to make it stand out a little bit. Um, I did the same thing with that first uh, stamp that goes, the ST that goes after the number one, um, just to make sure that that wasn't getting lost um, on my lined paper as well. So a little bit of black journaling pen to the rescue. And I still, like I said, that elephant, he's kind of bothering me. Um, I move him around a few times and I wasn't sure where to place him, but I really wanted to use him. I, I wanted him to be up at the top near the tags. So when I glue the tags down, uh, I do kind of scoot that lagoon colored one over just a little bit because I thought, well, maybe if there was you know, more of that tag for him to sit on. Maybe I would like that better, um, but that still didn't quite do the trick. And so then I will move him around the page just a little bit, but I feel like he's just kind of hanging out in space above my son's head. So I'll try bringing him down. Um, but I feel like when he is down, I'm going to move him down to that bottom title cluster here in just a second. Um, I feel like when he is down there, I mean, he doesn't look terrible, but it's starting to get really busy in that corner. And so it's just a little bit too much. I mean, that's kind of cute too, but again, there's a lot going on in that particular corner. I just feel like he needs to be up here by the tags, but um, it took me a little bit to figure out he needs something to stand on. Uh, just being on top of the tags was not enough. So I went back to those same two zip strips and I cut myself a few little pieces. I'll grab my ink pads and just swipe the edges here and I will glue them down underneath the elephant and that way he has a little something to stand up on. And so once that happened, it all started to come together much better for me. Um, so like I said, I'm really uh, honored and happy to help Erin celebrate her 20,000 subscriber achievement on YouTube. It is just an amazing, amazing accomplishment and so well-deserved. Um, she is su such an inspiration and a wonderful teacher. There are several other crafters who are also scraplifting um, Aaron's layouts and participating in the celebration hop. So make sure that you go to the description box down below to look for that playlist link and see what everybody else chose to do. Um, I, for one, uh, really loved that the layout that she made, and I was very happy to use it as an inspiration to get uh, my son's photo done. And that is one more off my desk, and I'm getting a little bit closer to that goal of mine of kind of getting all of those school photos and team photos uh, scrapbooked before I forget, you know, what year and what grade everybody was in. I have a few final touches I'm gonna to add to the page. I did scatter those lemonade co colored enamel dots around my three points in my visual triangle. And then I used some liquid glass to go over my bear's reading glasses to make them look a little bit more realistic. And then off camera at the end before I am all done with everything, I'm gonna grab some of my small numbered stamps to stamp the school year up on that white daisy tag. And that is going to be it for me. Thank you so much for being here with me today and watching. I hope you have been inspired um, much in the same way that I am inspired by watching Erin. And again, make sure you check out that playlist in the description box down below. Um, and I will also leave links to anything that is still available. Thanks for being with me here today and happy crafting. Bye.